Welcome back to Dear Amber. Today we hear from an American tourist in China for the first time. You can hear what life is like when you come here and don't take one of those tours. And on a related note, something you'll be facing as a tourist or as a person living here, which is a little bit on Chinese toilets. Okay, today on Dear Amber, we have a special treat, which is someone who's come to China for the first time and doesn't speak Chinese, and it's Elliot. Hello, Elliot. Hey, Amber. You're, how are you? Good. You're going to share with us your total China newbie experience, right? You know, it's always really interesting to get off a plane in a strange country, and you know, you you walk around, and, and really one of the most uh, shocking things, which I tried to get a picture of, but I didn't, was when you first walk out of the the main terminal there, because mm-hmm. there's like a ro- you know rows of probably hundreds of people. Like looking at you, and you're only, and you know, you're the only person kind yeah. of walking down the aisle. And so I find that actually in China, it's more like thousands of people yeah. than hundreds. Yeah, and I, there have been times like where I've tried to push that luggage cart out, and I'm like, I have to like push my way through the sea of people. I don't yeah. know if it was like that guy's for you guys. Yeah, it's, but that's it's, your it's, basic initiation into China is just masses of people, right? Yep, and more people than you can imagine. So was it hard? Like, how did you get from the airport to your hotel? How did you communicate? Right, you know, one just figured we would take a cab. Knew it was a ways away, um, and, and as usual, when you get to a, a, a foreign country, there are a lot of taxi drivers outside trying to get your business. They're trying right? to scout you or something, right? Right? They come, they come running up to you as as soon as you walk out the the exit, you know, yelling taxi. So you're mm. bombarded right away, and yeah. it's a little bit overwhelming. And we hadn't changed any any money yet, so we sold some U.S. dollars, which I thought would be fine. I thought I had read that, but anyway. Uh, made a deal with a with a with a nice young man for who you thought was nice. <laughs> yeah, who, who I thought was nice, and you know, number one thing you should never really deal with people right at the right at the uh, exit of the airport. But we did anyway. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to know what what to do because I mean every country is different too. Exactly. exactly. But actually, this is a perfect opportunity for a tip, which I can share is that anyone who comes to Shanghai or Beijing Airport. Don't listen to those scouts. There is a lineup for taxis, which is a very legitimate lineup. So tell us more. What happened with the scout? Did everything yep. turn out okay? So we knew. I mean, very wary of this man, right? We wanted to make sure mm-hmm. that he wasn't going to rip us off, and so we came to the agreement of seventeen U.S. dollars. Well, that's, that's good. It sounded, you know, he you said seventeen. Seventeen. We said that sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. Even if we're overpaying. That's fine. Like, let's just get us to our hotel, right? Yeah. Well, of course, we take. It's about an hour and a half to get to the hotel. We're, and my friend and I are looking at each other, saying, "Seventeen bucks. This is an amazing deal." <laughs> of course, we get over. So we get to the, the hotel. When one other thing that was interesting is, you know, we didn't, we didn't really think about the time. Kind of jet lag. weren't really thinking straight. They drop us off on the opposite side of the street from the hotel instead of pulling mm. right up to the hotel. So, you know, kind of like sus- suspicious things happening. And all of a sudden, they say, 70, 70. Well, and we said, no, well, 17. You, you imitated that accent so well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So now, all of a sudden, they're saying, they're making it seem like we had agreed to 70 dollars. Oh, no. Instead of the D came out. Dollars. Oh. And, um, you know, we, we kind of argued with them. We argued with them, and they they got really angry really quickly, oh. and we figured we must have just you know screwed it up, and we just gave them the seventy. And it turns out that was probably the wrong move. Anyway, yeah, you know. well, it probably should have cost like about usually costs about one hundred and fifty renminbi, which is about twenty two US to come from the airport. But hey, you can chalk it up that maybe you like supported some taxi man's family for like a month. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. F- Look some at it that good way. might have come out of the bad. Is what I like to say. Yeah, yeah, but that's good because your experience can help save many others the similar pain and agony of that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, also that ends well. At least you ended up the, at the hotel. Everything went okay from there. Yeah, everything was um, was good from there. Well, one tip I can say too is I remember reading a little while ago in a newspaper article that something similar happened to a tourist. I can't remember from where Sweden or something. And he also wasn't really familiar with the currency exchange. And so um, when he got to his hotel, the taxi driver told him, I think he told him the fare was something like a thousand renminbi when it should have been like a hundred. And the guy didn't really know the equation in his mind. He was jet lagged and he ended up paying it. But the tourist had had the um, wits about him to take the receipt from the cab driver, which has the taxi driver's number on it. And later it made the news and they found the taxi driver and they made the taxi driver pay 
this Swedish guy 10,000 RMB as compensation. So a good tip is, if you're unsure about anything, take that receipt or write down the number, which I know you guys almost did. We were, we were close. So cool because they actually took a picture in the taxi, but like missed the number that's sitting on the dashboard by just a couple inches. <laughs> it's always something, right? Yeah. Oh, well. Live and learn. Okay. So you've been in Shanghai a few days now. Um, what kind of, how about the tourist spots? Like what, have you had any cool experiences or what do you recommend for people or do you have any tips? Yeah. Uh, so there's nothing just, I mean, Shanghai is... We often have people tell us things like, I gave learning Mandarin a shot, but then I realized I really don't have enough time to commit to it. Folks who felt this way love Chinese Pod Recap. In as little as 90 seconds a day, you can refresh what you've learned so far while adding a bit of what's new to your daily learning. An innovative language learning tool to fit the busy, fast-paced lifestyle of today's professionals. An easy city to get around in the sense that you can hop in basically any cab. I mean, cabs, as we've, we've kind of spoken about, are they're really cheap, you yeah. know, two or three dollars to get a lot of places, but you know, those cabbies don't know really any English. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, have yeah. you had trouble communicating? Yeah, so I mean, just a another tip that I like to do is, is have at the hotel or wherever you're staying or if you know of the place that you want to go you just have to have that written in Chinese that's good advice and you hand it to the cab driver and then you're just good to go the meter is running and you're off and, and you'll be there in no time so you know from my experience I haven't seen any areas of Shanghai that were scary at all that's so um, so I didn't ever feel like you know feel in, as any, any uncomfortable situations um, so no pickpocket experiences or anything? No, no. That's good. Yeah. I, 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 one thing I thought that was really great was going to the top of um, the uh, Jim Mao Mount, Mount, oh, Mount Tower. Oh, okay. Very That's cool. Oh, I've and never you, done go that. To the, you go to the bar up there, so you don't, go, you don't pay for the, um, you know, get to go to the viewing deck or observatory. You just go and get a drink. And, I, and you know, it's not cheap or anything. Not that cheap. But at least you get a drink. But at least you get a drink and get to relax. Yeah, hey, that's a good check tip. It out. Yeah, because really yeah, cool. I know if you go up in the Pearl Tower, you have to pay like quite a bit of money. Right, right. Ah, right. You guys are smart. Yeah, so the Jin Mao Tower, amazing views down there. The whole Bund area is, is great. And, you know, there's just some just hole in the wall, like really cool, really great restaurants that you... You can go in and kind of experiment. I mean, usually some of the places that you might find aren't that expensive, so you can yeah. feel free to order a few things off the menu. And Yeah, I think one of the best things to do is just walk around and like yeah. poke into places, Yeah, and you'll always have fun. People are really friendly. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't speak, you can just point at things or like let them choose what you're going to eat. It's always an adventure. <laughs> yeah, one and one other thing that I, um, kind of a little tip that I'll kind of embed in my, in my mind now is there happens to be a lot of um, just, you know, beggar families that send their little kids to do kind of a lot of the actual pulling of your, of your shirt uh, oh, tail. Pulling of your heartstrings. Right, right. <laughs> make you feel really bad. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're, they're just trying to get a few RMB off of you. Mm -hmm. And you, you say, why not give this, give this poor child maybe four or five RMB and call it a day. And, what happens is, is that as soon as you do that, they have some sort of secret silent call that brings literally <laughs> some like high all frequency, their distant rel only yeah. they can hear a yeah. whistle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because they all come running. Because <laughs> literally, like as soon as you hand over a couple of uh, coins to them, they, they've, they've notified like their family and friends and all their relatives. Mm. And the next thing you know, there might be literally 20 people surrounding you not letting you go anywhere all asking for money pulling at your at hard. your pockets you got to be careful that these people aren't sticking your hands in your pockets trying to steal I know, your it's money. a bit stressful it is so it's, it's kind of guys... a high stress situation yeah. yeah so like what did you guys do how did you get get out of that <laughs> yeah we just happened to think of uh or heard of this word called gwen oh gwen is that how you say it uh i'm Properly? listening did someone teach you that uh, yeah yeah <laughs> that's I got a good, that. the only word you know in chinese is gwen that's not bad. It kind of means like get lost, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah, and, and I've, I've never. It's basically like the. I've never seen anybody react as quickly and as you know. This word is so direct to the, to these people that they literally turn it's on like their kryptonite. heels, right? <laughs> oh. Right, and they they walk away. So you say Gwen. And and they're gone. Wow, um, I've never ever tried that. Yeah, try it out. I mean, it's amazing their reaction. Okay, that's a good complete tip. Complete one eighty. That yeah. is a good tip. Good. Yeah. We'll post on the um, Dear Amber comments the actual character so everyone can memorize it for when they come. 
Okay, so did you spend most of your time in Shanghai, or did you guys go outside and see some other tourist sites? Yeah, we went to uh, a, a city about an hour and a half away called Z- Zitiang. So oh, Xitang. Z- Xitang. Yeah. Um, so that's, isn't that the water town, right? It is, it is. Okay, yeah, so these little water towns, that the streets are like canals, sort of, is it? It is. Again. It's really a really beautiful kind of little town. That, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Isn't that where they filmed Mission Impossible or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's this. So this particular uh, town has... The uh, the fame of Tom Cruise coming to visit and film a couple of scenes for Mission Impossible Three, and you know I've never seen more people excited to tell you about Tom Cruise and how handsome he is and how he walked down these same streets that you are. Oh really? Yeah, and I mean they they basically well there will be all these pictures of Tom Cruise on these on these walls and you know the Chinese people will come up and try to get you to ride in the rickshaws and I mean all the you know you won't say, understand a word except you'll hear them say Tom Cruise literally about a hundred times <laughs> so everybody's um, like blah, 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 Tom Cruise exactly, blah, 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 exactly. Tom Cruise. so that was really <laughs> funny you thought you were Tom Cruise yeah no I, I, <laughs> I mean you're pretty handsome there yeah right? <laughs> thank you. well thank you um, I, I just didn't think that it was about me this time <laughs> <laughs> well you can just let it give you an ego boost <laughs> yeah yeah I felt I pretty if you're dark haired, yeah. If you're dark haired, they think you're Tom Cruise, and if you're blonde haired, you're Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just tell us, someone who had not been to China before and hasn't really studied Chinese culture, give mm-hmm. us your impressions as a newcomer. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I'll take away from being in China is just the vast amount of people oh, and yes. kind of the way that the the amount of products that are being transported around to fill people's and China's needs. I mean, so there's so many people, right? Wherever you go, it's there's always people running around, you know, day or night. That's especially true. that walk, the, the walking street. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we were there on a holiday, so, you know, that, that had something to do with it. But literally, I mean, as far as you could see, w- huge wide walking street, um, probably 100 meters wide. Yeah. Um, completely packed. I mean, and, and just stores and stores everywhere. Little boutique shops to like the most, you know, malls with the top names of all brands. Mm, And then, you know, and then right next to that in the back alley are the people selling all the fake stuff. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so much like commerce and products and people wanting to spend their money on this and that. And just the consumption level is something like it's just really shocking. Yeah, just like enough products and stores to even supply all the people right right right. it's true i've often thought like you could open any store here and make a living because there's just there's definitely consumers for you yeah there's always there's someone there's someone always out there that's interested in what whatever it is that you're selling yeah that's so true Mm -hmm. another thing i wanted to to mention was just the idea you know it's in china you're you're free to have a beer in your hand basically 24 hours a day whether you're in <laughs> was that an cab. exciting thing for you <laughs> yeah i, I mean it was for you and your y- friend clay <laughs> yeah yeah well we didn't you know we did uh, take advantage of that uh, i guess once or twice it's true actually i've been away from canada so long but yeah when i go back i can't even okay it's worse for us in canada we can't even buy beer at 7-eleven you know like in the states uh, yeah. we can but yeah, we right. can't that's not cool yeah so i think yeah it is, it is kind of a fun free feeling that you can walk down the street drinking a beer if you right. want <laughs> you can buy a gigantic beer for 50 cents and you know, walk down the street, get into a cab, yeah. and, and really, without even a thought about it. Yeah. I, I thought that's really, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. It is, and it's very different, and it's actually something I'm totally used to, and it's kind of cool to hear the fresh China through fresh eyes. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Elliot. You're welcome. Cool. Thanks for having me, Amber. <laughs> Learning Chinese is a little overwhelming. Sometimes it even feels like I forget more than I learn. Not sure how that's possible. Hmm. Maybe I need to take more ginkgo biloba? Yeah, probably. But have you heard of ChinesePod? They have an amazing new tool called the Recap app. You can choose 90 second, 3 minute, or 6 minute lesson recaps. Whatever fits your schedule. The app even populates itself with the reviews of the lessons you've most recently studied. Cool. Maybe I don't need to get my head checked. Maybe. ChinesePod.com forward slash recap. This question comes from Urban Dweller. It's a very appropriate question for an Urban Dweller, actually, John. (laughs) So he asks, what's the deal with squat toilets? I heard they're still in use in China and that they're pretty nasty. Yes, um, John, what do you say? Yeah, they're they're definitely still in use and uh, they they can be pretty nasty. (laughs) And I'd like to add to everyone that me and John B are the experts on this topic because we both have TB, which I call tiny bladder. (laughs) (laughs) Like a walnut. (laughs) Yeah, me and John B are always in the lineup for the bathroom here at Chinese Pod, so that's why I knew 
to haul him in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so let's start with. I mean, his first question is about the squat toilets, but we can kind of. I mean, this could go so far. There's so many things to talk about toilets in China. Yeah, absolutely, toilets, and they're they're such a kind of interesting and kind of horrifying topic, but they're they're great to talk about.、So. Yeah, and so definitely there is squat toilets in China、mm. a lot. Yeah,、um, I would say. What percentage? Even in Shanghai, probably seventy-five, eighty percent, and、mm. outside of the big cities, a hundred. Yes. Okay. So, part of it is that the toilets are squatters.、Um, another issue is a lot of times they're not even. A toilet. They're more like a trough, I would say. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I, for guys, the trough, you know, isn't that bad. Really? But, well. well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Depends what you're doing.、Yeah. Right. I mean, let's clarify. Okay. We'll use some <laughs> euphemisms here. <laughs> number one. Number two. Okay. <laughs> so, what were you gonna say? Oh, the trough for men. Right. The, the, I mean, number one. You know, even in the the West, I remember going to baseball games and stuff, and you had a trough for number one. But the trough for number two is. A different experience. Yeah, and let me explain to people. Actually, what we'll do is I've taken a picture of the trough toilet at Chinese Pod downstairs, oh, <laughs> and I'm going to post it on the site for you all because sometimes it's hard to understand what we're talking about unless you've actually seen it. Because even when you see it, you can't believe it. Yeah, there's to... no plumbing. <laughs> it's basically I don't know a trough. It's, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a trough. <laughs> yeah, and then I guess maybe they just rinse stuff down to get rid of the. Well, the, the men's the men's has this this giant tank, and it's actually really fulfilling because it's it's、uh, it's huge. It's like Three or four times as big as a normal toilet, and so you pull it, and it's just this, this rush like rapids of water down the trough. And it, oh well, it seems like a good system. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so John,、um, do you find it traumatizing the toilet situation here? Well, I've been traumatized. Okay, like, so tell us, are, share with everyone. Would you mind sharing your worst toilet experience? Yeah, I'll share mine if you share yours. All right. <laughs> my、uh, my my worst toilet experience was it was in 2001, and I was up in northeast China. And I was teaching, and the school that I worked with, we had this program where we took our city kids out to the country for a week. And、mm. so we are out in the countryside, and I mean, this is rural Manchuria in China. It's just like cornfield, 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 village, cornfield, cornfield. You know, it's just、mm-hmm. middle nowhere. So we were in the little schoolhouse, and I had to go to the bathroom. So I asked my the the teaching assistant, "Where's the bathroom?" And she says, "It's like 200 meters down this path." And I thought, "Wow, 200 meters? That's kind of far. I really have to go to the bathroom." So、yeah. I start going. I start going, and it doesn't sound like there's any potential for any plumbing when it's that far away, does it? Yeah, exactly. Well, there wasn't. There wasn't any plumbing. Period. Uh, so, uh. <laughs>、um, but I, you know, I figured, well, it couldn't be gotta that go, bad, right? Gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> See, I started going, and about about a hundred meters down the path, about halfway. Your nose starts to realize why the toilet's two hundred meters away from everything else. <laughs> And I mean, just you, you get closer, and it's just it's it's like exponentially more horrifying.、Mm. Uh, it's it's like you know one of those curves where once like you like a rank o meter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you actually were to go in the toilet, it would be infinitely smelly. Oh my! You know, like, Did you get into the toilet? No,、well? I got I got close enough to see it. You saw it. And I saw it. It was it was just a a little wooden building with a with a door and these wooden slats. Oh. And I just I couldn't do it. It was just the the ammonia. The pure, like, just ammonia <laughs> smell. It, it, it honestly, it smelled just like cleaning ammonia. And, and maybe it, they had cleaned it. Maybe that's why. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's not, not that. That's not, that, not why. Not that clean. <laughs> Because there were other smells, just,、uh-huh. I, I can't find them with one chemical. <laughs> yes, <you know? laughs> yes, mixed in. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I ended up just peeing on a bush. It was, it was you know all I、what? could do. The, the good old bush. I mean,、yeah. honestly, when I'm in the alley, sometimes I wish there was a bush because I would choose that <laughs> over the toilet. You know, you can pee、Too、in、bad. the alley. <laughs> so there is advantages to being in the rural areas. There are bushes, not、yeah. like in the city. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, my worst experience probably was my first time to China because I didn't really have any clue about these sorts of things. But it was in a big city, Beijing, and I think Beijing. Probably even gotten a lot better now, bathroom-wise, since the Olympics are coming. Because this was about more than five years ago. But one thing that,、mm, of course, the squat was expected or even normal. One thing that kind of was surprising to me that was that the、um, a lot of the stalls in the public bathrooms didn't have doors on them. So I walked in and there's women like just there, and you have to go right in the stall with no door. So that was a little bit traumatizing for me. So yeah, I think the, one of the, the reasons is I mean like sometimes there were even doors on the stalls, but girls wouldn't shut them. Like I saw a girl kind of like chatting with her friend and looking like at a magazine while they were like going to the bathroom. But I think it's because going to the bathroom here it's not so private or such a big deal like it is for us in the West. What do you think, John? Yeah, I think. It's it's just another one of those like no personal bubble, no personal. 
normal space and yeah that it's just another function like yeah. eating or sleeping or whatever right and I think probably it comes from like don't a lot of the lane houses have shared bathrooms here is yeah. that right um, even now a lot of those they're actually really expensive because they're in nice areas of the city but they have shared external bathrooms and oh really yeah yeah, so it's not, you know, we're just a little bit uptight about our, our bathroom privacy, I think, John. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to keep being uptight. I, that's something I'm proud of. <laughs> it's nice to keep some of your culture with you, even, even when you adapt new things. Exactly. <laughs> okay, but one ta- okay, but there's a tip I can give everyone, which later someone said to me, and I thought, why didn't I think of that? Is that you can bring an umbrella... And an umbrella is like a portable stall door. Oh, Did you ever think of that? I didn't. So you just open it in front of you, and you can do your little business there. <laughs> and in my experience in those the men's bathrooms, everybody is reading a newspaper. So you, you hold the newspaper oh. long, and it, it works about the same way. Hey, that's perfect. Hey, and something else that we maybe people don't know is that you always should be bringing tissues with you, your own mm. little pack. That's yeah. a must. Because you're, you won't find a roll of toilet paper sitting there, likely. Yeah, absolutely not. You might be able to buy them, though. Yeah. Um, a lot of the public toilets have a little lady out front that sells uh, tissues. Yeah, and so you will find public toilets on the street here. It's not going to be a problem. They may be squat, but often they are run by someone. So you yeah. do pay like five mao or something, mm-hmm. but um, they're not bad. They're pretty clean. They're pretty safe. Don't be too scared. Um, one tip, though, and public bathrooms here, for men, there's often two prices, like number what? one and number two. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I've never heard that. It's only for men. I've never, for been men. A- I've never been asked before I go in what I'm going to do. Yeah, women, almost always, women will be one price and it'll be the same price as the men's number two price. Oh. <laughs> so I guess they figure if you use a stall, it, it, it costs the oh, same amount. Oh, it's about the stall rental fee. Exactly. Whereas a urinal is like, it's cut rate. So, oh, but often, that's pretty good. But <laughs> often if you're, um, if you're a foreigner and a guy, you'll go in and maybe the price will be like one kwai or five mao. And, Whoa, and the guy sweet. will just tell you, you know, one kwai. So like, do they check? Like, what if you cheat? No, I don't think they check. But I'm saying it's if you... It's an honor ju- system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But if you if you just have to pee, make sure that you're paying the the peeing rate. Not oh, the, not and maybe the they know rate. by how long you're in there. So. <laughs> it could be. Okay, now some probably like what urban dwellers are a bit maybe worried about, and like a lot of people would be is like maybe they've never squat to go to the bathroom before. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, hard. like it's old hand for us now. But John, like, do you was it hard for you? Like yeah. at first, <laughs> <laughs> it was. It, it not at first. It's still hard. I, I I'm just not very. You gotta work out the muscles more. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know from from birth Chinese it's just like a cultural thing there's this like resting squat yeah it's true that even just for normal on the street like, yeah. yeah and it's flat footed and I, I still can't do the flat footed um, I played catcher uh, baseball mm. catcher for years and years and years and so I thought eh, squat no problem and the first time I went to one of those toilets, I squatted down into that baseball catcher squat, and you realize that it's it's really vertical. You know, you yeah, fit, like you gotta get the angle your right, feet, or you know? it could be kind of messy. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, if you're really used to getting down into that position, then then going backwards, you know, your your center of gravity starts moving backwards, and you <laughs> don't want to fall in a toilet. You do not <laughs> trust yes. us. You do not want to fall in these toilets. Like <laughs> if if someone gives you the option of like shooting you in the knee or throwing you in a toilet. Take the bullet, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good analogy, John. It will impress upon our listeners how important it is before you arrive to practice the squat position. It, it's hard. It's muscles you don't use. You know, it's like it's like tones and squatting. They're they're yes. just Chinese things you got to practice. Yeah, you got to practice. And I mean, there is sort of like the option to put your hand on the wall to balance yourself, but I don't know if you want to do that either. Um, maybe kind of gross. Another maybe you can edit this out. But another tip. Hey guys, it's Michael here at Chinese Pod. And we want to say thank you to all of our faithful subscribers. If you're not registered yet, head over to ChinesePod.com now and get 20% off. We got promo codes, promo code. Use promo code GET20 at checkout to get 20% off your first year. If you're in a train, uh, talking about putting your hand on a wall, mm. if you're in a train, especially these old trains, don't grab the water pipe in front of you. Oh. A lot of, a lot, <laughs> at least one time, <laughs> when the train bumps and you pull on it, the water pipe gives way. Oh, and are you speaking from experience, Daddy? Yes, I, <laughs> I hope it was a water pipe, not a sewage pipe. It, it was a water okay, pipe, good. but it was still kind of embarrassing walking out of the toilet wet. Okay, and these are the things you will only learn here on Dear Amber. Exactly. <laughs>
Okay, so I would say, just to reassure everyone, if you come to a big city, it's not going to be a problem. Like, yeah. I mean, one thing, you don't have to worry about bathrooms too much. We have small bladders. We always find one. There's always a McDonald's or some yeah. sort of, like, fast food restaurant you can usually use. Most apartments in a big city have a normal toilet. I have yeah. a normal toilet. Yeah, I do. But yeah. smaller cities, um, I think you might be out of luck. Yeah. So you better get used to the squatting. Uh, even even in Hangzhou, you had to, it was just a pretty nice city where you had to go to Starbucks or something to find a real, to- uh, a Western toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's not called a real toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Which one came first? Probably the squatters. Probably the squatter. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we hope that helped Urban Dweller and we hope that took away some people's toilet anxiety. And actually, we have a lesson right now coming out that's um, kind, of, kind of related. It's for those bathroom stalls that actually do have a door. It's called, Is Someone In Here? So everyone can go and check out the newbie lesson on there that. It's about checking if someone's in the stall. <laughs> Thanks, John. No problem. And appropriately, the word of the week for this week, something you've all been wanting to learn, was the word for toilet, which is ma tong, and it's third tone and third tone. But when pronounced, the third tone becomes second tone. So it's ma tong, er shang gen san shang, ma tong, toilet in Chinese. That's everything for this week's Dear Amber, the insider's guide to everything China. Now, don't forget to send your questions to me at dearamber at praxislanguage.com and go to the comments section of Dear Amber found in the extras tab at chinesepod.com and get more information on today's show. And you can also post your own insights on toilets and traveling as a tourist in China. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time on Dear Amber. Shai zi jian.